put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Amazing Spider-Man 3D Movie Review. Peter Parker is a perfectly average high school student. Except he's a bit of a nerd, but a likable nerd. You know, like that other Peter Parker we've been seeing in movies. And he has a bit of a crush on Gwen Stacy, who might actually share a little bit of the same, just, just maybe. One day, for reasons frankly a bit too stupid to explain, he's bitten by a spider. I guess science-y stuff was done to it, um, yeah. And gradually he discovers that he is Spider-Man. He struggles to control these new powers with comic relief scenes of him, you know, accidentally using too much force when, you know, opening a door or turning on the water faucet and stuff like that. It actually is somewhat humorous. And he slowly discovers that there might be more to his father than he thought. And as the police respond to this masked vigilante, as they call him, and they're basically right, they aren't exactly fond of what he's doing. And then the recognized scientist, I don't remember the field name, Kurt Connors, discovers the, you know, makes a bit of a breakthrough and becomes the lizard. And Spider-Man may be the only one who can stop him. I'm going to try to be perfectly honest here. This is a film that, you know, if you really like the old series the way it was, there, you know, you might not like this one. There, there are certainly things to like and things to not like about this movie. This is kind of the teenager Spider-Man. This, you know, there, there are a lot of things in this movie that are very teenager -y and yeah, I guess there are a few Twilight aspects even. I maintain that this is nowhere near as bad as something like Twilight, but yeah, we do have some, some aspects of such. This fleshes out a lot of the sort of, you know the, the Spider-Man stuff. There are some that are calling this sort of a remake of the 2002 one. Yes, they have scenes in common, but this one fleshes them out more. You know, we have a scene of Flash getting, you know, becoming a laughing stock on account of Peter, but in this one. Peter had actually, you know, it's not the first scene where we see Flash, you know, and there's actually, you can understand why Peter does it, it, you know, because prior to that there is indeed a scene of Flash 
being a bully to Peter. The real sort of positive to this movie, the, the greatest strength it has is, I would say without a doubt, the emotional core, the heart of this movie. The romance between, the, the puppy love romance between Peter and Gwen. I defy anyone, any, or at least any straight man, to not fall in love with Gwen Stacy along with Peter Parker. You completely understand. I don't mind Kirsten Dunst, Mary Jane, Kirsten Dunst's, yeah, Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane, but I don't fall in love with her, you know, she, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to her on, on that kind of level. This one, you fall completely head over heels for her. And even if you don't, you completely understand why Peter does. And she's also actually a character. She has other attributes. She's not just the love interest. You know. She has personality. And the... Just... Sort of how, how Peter, over time, kind of figures out exactly how he's going to be as Spider-Man. And, you know, this one actually, as other critics have pointed out, sort of explains why he becomes Spider-Man. Well, sort of, it does explain why he becomes Spider-Man, where the first one, where the, you know, the 2002 movie, not so much, you know, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give away why he becomes Spider-Man, but, you know, it, it makes sense. And, you know, then over time, it sort of changes how he, you know, how he is a Spider-Man changes over time with, you know, he, he meets people who are of different opinions than him, and it gives him some perspective. The role... Dennis Leary as George Stacy is really, really good. You know, the moment that I saw the trailer and saw that it was Dennis Leary they had cast, I really hoped that they would go ahead and give him Dennis Leary dialogue. And they do. Not an awful lot, maybe, but some of what he says is just pure Dennis Leary, and it's, it's hysterical. You know, and just his role... You know, this, this police captain who's trying to maintain law and order and, you know, for once in a Spider-Man movie, the police actually exist! You know, I don't know where they were in the Sam Raimi movies, but here, you know, it's, okay, there's this masked vigilante calling himself Spider-Man, you know what, we don't know what he's gonna do, he's, you know, and he's actually messing up some of our operations with his, you know, irregular activity. And then, you know, and when the lizard starts showing up, they're also like, you know what, this is a threat to the city, we gotta deal with it. You know, the police actually exist and take their job very seriously in this. And he's just, he's a good, strong character. And even though he is somewhat of an antagonist for Spider-Man and Peter Parker, because he's not terribly fond of Peter being his daughter's crush, you know. In spite of that, you really like him and, and can, you know, sympathize with him. You, you, yeah. The lizard, they do a really, really good job on. The, for one thing, he represents the most tense and scariest moments in a recent Spider-Man movie. You know, right... Rewatch the, the old trilogy, and then watch this one. The Lizard is freaking terrifying. Nothing in those three movies gets... And I'm not sure they were really trying to be terribly scary, but they certainly aren't anywhere near as scary as The Lizard is. Freaking huge. The... just... The face, you know, unlike Dobby, this, you know, 
first movie bad guy has a very expressive face. You know, I'm not entirely sure if it's just makeup or if it's CGI, but you can tell that there's, there's in the eyes and the expressions, there's just this, I'm not sure hint is the right word because it's, it's more clear than that, but you can tell there's intelligence there. This is not just some wild animal. This is not just a reptile out in the, you know, it might have the form of a lizard, but it has the brain of something smarter, and that makes him so much more dangerous. And you can really tell. There are some things that the lizard does in this movie where you're thinking, he knew exactly what that was going to do, you know, he, he's smart. And yeah, that makes him a really big threat. That's actually also something, in this movie, once Peter gets the hang of it, Spider-Man seems kind of invulnerable. He's just like, okay, I'm not even, why even bother? Why even try? I'm, I'm invulnerable. And then when, once he meets Lizard, it's like, <laughs> yeah, welcome to the bottom of the food chain, buddy. Just, it, it really is a huge difference because, you know, first they build up Spider-Man as this, you know, he, like, he doesn't even have to try, really. By the way, the Spidey sense in this movie is far better done than in the old movies. And, yeah, then the lizard comes around and it just completely, and in general, the lizard is really nicely built up. I do think that the lizard kind of, I like that they actually, in this movie, kept to the real Kirk Connors somewhat before he becomes the lizard because it is this he wants to help people and that really is his motivation partly also he wants his arm back you know as in the comics but then once he changes he just has this weird kind of his character changes completely he becomes this kind of he, he like wants to yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna give away, but he just, he basically goes completely evil, and, yeah, I don't know, it just, it didn't really seem to fit or make sense, but they are actually at least consistent with that, so, you know, there's that. This, I, I should maybe spell out. I've already said that this is sort of the more teenage version, and I made a reference to this element of the film in the plot summary, but it does bear mentioning, it, it may be even repeating, this movie is somewhat dumbed down compared to the old trilogy. There are some really some, some aspects where it's just oversimplified. For, for one thing, Peter is actually a little stupid in this. And it, at the very least, it's not like it's something like Prometheus where suddenly the, you know, PhD guys are just, you know, complete idiots. It actually is a character trait. This, this Peter Parker is just a little bit of a dum-dum sometimes. He, he makes really stupid mistakes. I guess that's the teenager part of him, you know. He might be this really smart guy, which is actually also something. The Tobey Maguire Peter is kind of a nerd, but I don't really see him applying his brain that much. In this, you do kind of, and you know, yes, he actually builds the you know, the web shooters. And just in general, you get this sense that this is a smart guy. You know, he could actually, yeah, he, he's smart. And the, the film is, does spend a bit of time, it's, it's quite well paced, I would say. I, I was never really bored, but it does, it is worth noting, it does spend a bit of time before you see Spidey in costume. And, you know, it does go through the, you know, it, it retells the origin and we see this Peter Parker going through 
the development and figuring out his powers and you know this stuff. The new Spidey suit. I, I think it's the ultimate version of the Spidey suit, some, something like that. I quite like that decision. I wouldn't have minded staying around, staying with the old one. But even more important, this one actually looks real. It doesn't look fake CGI like the old one did, especially in the older movies. But you know, you could argue that it still doesn't look like something a teenager could come up with, but then, you know, it's kind of, okay, what do you want? Do you want it to look like, you know, look good, look like the comics, or do you want it to look like something a teenager could come up with? Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. The action is great. It's also much easier to follow than in the old one. It's, it's less sort of, maybe less sort of grandiose, which is not to say that it's not still really big, but it's now also very close and tight, so you really feel the blows. It doesn't feel as much like out of this world as it feels really up close and personal. And they do this really well. I don't... It's not like it's too close where it gets like annoying or it gets like confusing, shaky cam or anything like that. You really can follow it quite well. It's very fast. The effects are excellent. Although the, the film doesn't rely on them all that much. Again, it really is, you know, the emotional core, the heart of the film that drives it. The 3D is pretty minimal. There's, there's almost no 3D. It, it's really just in the fights that there's like noticeable 3D, especially, you know, but, but yeah, there's not an awful lot of it. I'm not sure the film really needed to be 3D, and if you want to save some money, don't bother seeing it in 3D. There's really not that much where you're, you're going to be like, wow, I'm really glad I didn't miss that in 3D. The characters, a lot of the way, are much more fleshed out, much more believable. This, you know, Aunt May and Uncle Ben, when they talk, they really are an old married couple. You know, they, they bicker, and it's, it's funny, and it's endearing. You know, you really feel like these are real people, not just a Hallmark card. And... You know, and, and they also, you know, they get mad at Peter, and, you know, there's there's drama, there's actual, it's, yeah, real people and real situations. Actually, a lot of this film didn't even really need to be about a costume superhero. It really is, you know, a drama that happens to have a costume hero, superhero as its main character. And again, that doesn't mean that the action isn't great or that there isn't a pretty good amount of it. This also is very much the kind of origin story where it's sort of more towards the end that you feel that now we have the titular character, you know, now he is the Amazing Spider-Man, you know. So, you know, a, a lot of the sort of heroics and such, I would say we have in store for the intended next installment, you know. Which is not to say that we don't get some, and that actually is, again, with the, you know, emotional core of the movie, is a really great aspect of the film. We really do feel like this is a hero, and we know why he is a hero, and we believe that he has become a hero. He was a teenage boy, now he is a hero. Now he is something for people to look up to, he is an icon. I suppose that more or less covers it. But yes, overall, a good movie, definitely. It, you know, there, there are some things about it that, you know, I, I can imagine 
it'll be pretty split. Some people will prefer the old one, some people will prefer the new one. I'm very much on the side of the new one, but there are arguments for both camps, and I think this actually really opens up interesting, interesting discussion. Now you can kind of contrast and compare and say, well, there's this good aspect to you know, the old trilogy, or, and there's this other good aspect to this new one. So, it definitely does good things that the old trilogy didn't do. Which, yeah, you know, and we have had three movies of the, you know, the same Raimi style, so it's interesting to see some of, you know, a different take on it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.